Hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, today is the first day, or first week actually, of the class, and uh, I talked about the various aspects of the class the previous session. But just to give you a sense of my style, uh, I'm hyper, uh, I'm nuts, I love this stuff, so I will tend to be myself with you, as if you know you're in the room with me, and um, I hope that's actually good for your your learning rather than interfering. And I talk about life and so on as we go along. And uh, the good news is you can always skip parts you don't enjoy. Whereas if you were in the class, you have to suffer me throughout the class. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start off with the content. And this is what I do in class too. The first week, if it's left just introductory, I don't think it's right. We have time, we have a lot to cover, and I will start with the topic. One important aspect I want you to recognize is that typically in uh, real time when you're teaching classes like this, uh, the amount of exposure the students have to a teacher or the classroom time, if you may, is a lot more than on video. And video is very intense, there's very few interruptions. Uh, those are the downsides, I think. But on the other hand, as I said, you can keep learning from others and you can keep going back to the video. I want to emphasize this every time, is that the good news is you have the video. And I want the video to be self-contained. I will not give you too many notes. In fact, I'd encourage you if you really want to learn, and I've thought about this a lot, Encourage you to make your own notes as we are talking, you know. I think note-taking, thinking through however you want to do, scribble on a tablet, use a pen or a paper, I'll encourage you to do that because then you've created your own set of notes. I was inclined to give you a lot of material, but there are a lot of textbooks available and I'll give, they are in the syllabus, I've mentioned uh, a few. There are others. I want you to choose your resource and me to provide you enough to be able to be successful in learning this class. So we'll talk, start talking about the time value of money today, and we are going to continue this in the next week. And the reason is time value of money is central to understanding finance. So let's get started. I want to pitch the beauty of finance, if you remember, as its ability, the structure and the details and the tools, the ability of finance to solve, or un I shouldn't say solve, but to understand decision making and make good decisions. So we're never sure whether our decision is going to be right or wrong, but that's life. But we want to develop a framework where the chances of you making good decisions given the information you have goes up. So I hope you recognize that. So what is really critical to decision making? Every decision involves time and uncertainty. I have emphasized this in the introduction of the class and I will keep emphasizing it. If you understand time and you understand uncertainty at a gut level, in a framework context, in a daily life context, I think you would have arrived and it'll, life will be so cool. You know, you'll be able to make decisions not using Excel but based on your gut as if you've also used Excel because your framework is so strong. So time and uncertainty. These are, these are common to every decision. Please recognize that. It's common to every decision whether you want to cross the street or whether you want to create a new technology to solve poverty, which I hope you do. Okay, very important to understand just the impact of time on a decision. And that's what we call time value of money, typically. We ignore uncertainty for some time. And I'm going to do that in a very deliberate way. I will talk about it because life is full of uncertainty. But I'm going to try to ignore bringing in uncertainty simply because if we learn in a linear way, Building blocks will help us get there rather than throw everything at you and it's going to be difficult. So remember, we are going to spend a lot of time understanding the impact of time with uncertainty somewhere at the back of our minds but not explicitly accounted for. And 
just to re-emphasize this issue, I'm putting it up as a bullet point and so that you can make notes on this. We got to internalize the time value of money. And so what I'm going to do now is give you a sense of what some terminology is available to us, which actually it turns out to be, except for the fact that it's in English that I'm talking, makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on each one of them before jumping in into actually talking about finance. So it, it, you can think of it as the language of finance that we need. And I'm not going to throw too much language at you. I'll throw it, throw enough so that you understand what's going on at that point in time. So the first thing that we will try to talk a lot about is present value and something that's closely related to it, future value. I would like you to, I'll soon start drawing timelines which are very important. So basically one of the things that you need to know is how to draw a timeline. And if you know how to draw a timeline, half the problem is solved. Because the world's problems are awesome because nobody knows how to approach them. World, the life in general is quite complicated. What finance does is makes it simple. I mean, that's what you want from a framework, not to make life more complicated. It's complicated enough. So look at what present value means. It means the value of anything today, present as in now. What does future value mean? The, the value in the future. And what time in the future? We'll start off with very simple examples and make it infinite future, right? So, so, so you don't need to worry about uh, present versus future. We'll structure it within a problem that you have. But the, the most important aspect of this is look at the units in which both are measured. The units in which both are measured are dollars, or yen, or rupee, as I said, wherever you are, the currency of your country. And you're from all over the world uh, taking this class, which, to, which that alone excites me, you know. And so uh, hopefully I can reach you and help you learn this stuff. So whether it's a dollar, a yen, or whatever, both are in dollars. And the, the, again, dollar is not the important thing. But the thing is that we have a, it's a measurement of value. And a lot of things in life actually sh can't be measured. Love, for example, is something that you can't put a dollar sign. That's why it's so awesome. But for matters in this class, the dollar sign is just a language of reflecting value. So the unit is very important because I'm going to now go to the next thing, which is N. And many times it could be called T, T as in Tom, symbol. It's for the number of periods that you're thinking about. So for example, if you're thinking only about today versus next year, then the N is one. But notice again, why is this important? Because you'll recognize in a second that the passage of time alone makes decision making both interesting and challenging. And that's why I love finance is that, think about it, it's just because of the passage of time. You need to worry about so many things, but isn't it cool that time alone can make such a huge difference? So the number of periods, now the, it's critical for you to understand something which I'll repeat according. The problem will lend itself to the definition of the period. So we'll just remember that. The period doesn't have to be a year. It ha can be one day, depending on the nature of the problem. Finally, the most critical aspects of finance is if I were to capture one element of finance that distinguishes itself from everything else, it is the next symbol, R. And I'm using it in lowercase uh, R here. Sometimes textbooks use caps and so on for N and so on. Don't worry about that. The critical element here is this. The first aspect of an interest rate is it's not in dollars. It is in a percentage terms. So it's like a change over time. This is very, very important to understand. And I think intuitively you do, but practically we'll also try to see what's going on with it. The other element which is very, very important for this class, and in a way, this is the one aspect of the class that I wish I could spend weeks on, but we don't have the time, is we'll assume the interest rate is positive. 
And I'll say this is an assumption. And let me throw out an idea to you. Where, does, where do interest rates come from? Why are they typically positive? Can they be negative is a fascinating topic. And I would recommend a book called Theory of Interest, written in 1930 by Irving Fisher, who, if you read the book, it pretty much blows your mind. This guy, almost a century ago, has predicted all modern finance. And he writes in such an awesome way. No technical stuff, just some graphs. It's just awesome stuff to read. But the critical aspect of that book is that it will take you off on a journey that won't be the journey we'll take, at least aspects of it. And that is, we'll assume that the interest rate is positive because that's what we usually see. But I want you to recognize that assumption right up front. And again, repeat again, I know you are clamoring for uncertainty. I love uncertainty. I think that's what makes life interesting. But for the time being, we are going to stick with no uncertainty. Of course, that's uh, completely unrealistic, but it's simply so that our building blocks of learning and time that it takes to learn happens the natural way. So I've introduced the terminology. I want you to stare at these things for a little while. Please remember, I'll introduce more, and I want you to get comfortable with these. So for example, if you want to take a break now, and you want to go Google, that's the beauty of Google. In fact, uh, when my son was little, um, even now, he asks me questions, and I usually don't have a clue of the answer. So for example, why is the sky blue? So I would say to Gabe, Gabriel, Gabriel, why don't you Google? So I think by about five, he thought Google was this really cool person who knew everything. And my dad is a loser. So, so just, just so that you have um, just wanted to talk about this because this is cool stuff, right? So just go Google, try to read your book. You've got to get familiar with these concepts a little bit if you want to take a break.